The occasion of this video is to talk about freestyle rigging. It allows you to go from having your character art to having a ready to animate character in just a short amount of time. It's unbelievable. Let's get into it. Up to this point, all of the rigs that I've built have been done manually. Unsurprisingly, some of the steps are the same. When you have your character set up, each of the pieces and parts needs to be separated. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is to create symbols out of each of the elements. For this demo, I'm not going to rename the symbols, but I actually end up naming the symbols intelligently at a later point because having proper names for your symbols is going to help with the rigging process later down the line. So you can either do it now or you can do it later. Next, we'll want to move the pivot points where they're going to rotate. You know, in some of my previous rigging videos, I used artwork that has a plus sign in it so that I could really accurately line up the pivot point where the symbol is going to need to rotate. While that's helpful, pay attention to just how I'm eyeballing it here. Thankfully, the plugin allows you a little bit of leeway when it comes to the placement of your symbols, especially in the auto rigging or the freestyle rigging process. It's really, really cool stuff. So here's where things get fun. You can make your symbols adaptable by using the Make Symbols Adaptable tool. What this does, in the previous approach, we would move the pivot point on the symbol where it's going to rotate, and then we'd hit Control T. Well, Make Adaptable is re replacing Control T because it allows you to batch process all of your symbols and move all of the registration points from where it is normally, in the, usually in the upper left-hand corner of the symbol, to where the pivot point has been placed. It does it automatically and it's a batch operation. Very, very cool. And next is the best part. Press F4 to access the freestyle rigging tool. This tool is not available from the SMR helpers panel. This is where the auto rigging or freestyle rigging takes place. We're going to want to drag from the parent to the child links. And just like with manual rigging, you want to start with the root or the base, which in most cases is going to be the, the pelvis or the hips. And then you're going to want to draw out and drag from the parent to the child links. It took me a couple of tries to get this right. And you know that famous T pose that a lot of 3D models are set in? Yeah, there's a lot of sense in rigging a character in that pose. And it's because here I had a little bit of trouble getting that shoulder linkage set up. I have another note for the shoulder and then for the bicep so that I can do shoulder shrugs. Once you get that all done, your rigging's complete. That's it. In such a short amount of time, your character is now ready to animate unbelievable now what's cool is that freestyle rigging process it is actually creating center markers magnet targets and it's creating as many as are needed for each of those elements so now let's just kind of test the rig out you'll notice here that i've added some ik controllers there are a couple of ways that you can do that you can either select the symbol that you want to have bound by the ik controller and push the button in the smr helpers panel or you can hit shift F1 and that will attach an IK controller to that symbol. Now there are a couple of things that happen when you're auto rigging or when you're freestyle rigging. The smart magnet rig is being created for you automatically. Thankfully, the smart magnet rig is able to be modified after the fact and that's really cool. As cool as freestyle rigging is, there still may be an occasion for you to go back in and modify the rig and we're gonna do just that in this demo. So one of the things you'll notice is the character has one arm. I deliberately set up the art that way, both for speed and because I figured that the far side of the arm wouldn't be visible. But I decided, you know what, I, I do want to give the character two arms. What's the best way to do that? So we're going to go ahead and modify the art and modify the rig. Now, one thing that I often worry about is breaking the rig. What I mean by that is adding something to the to the stage or locking something so that the rig doesn't work. This has happened a couple of times. Thankfully, in this case, what we're going to do, we're going to duplicate the arm. 
Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the rig info from the duplicated set. Once I remove the rig info from the duplicated set of symbols, we're going to re-rig that part of the character and attach it to the rig. So what we'll do is we'll draw out those bubbles and then we'll tag each of those symbols using the tag tool in the connection editor. Now there's something weird going on here. The rig that we see right now is not showing both sets of nodes for the arms, but the rig is working properly. It, it is a little strange, but as you can see, when you examine and, and test the rig, both arms are working as you would expect. Not sure what's happening there. I think it's just the connection editor is not showing the updated version of the rig. But let's just, let's forget about it for the moment and let's put the character through her paces. Yeah, this is so satisfying. You know, I hate to sound like an, an animator that doesn't like to draw, but when I animate, with a rigged character. Like I'm freed up from fighting and fussing with drawing the character in all these different positions and stuff. And I can really focus on the storytelling. You know, I can focus on how elegant she is or how much of a hurry she is, or, you know, focus on the comedy or the drama, the whatever situation I'm going to be putting the character in. It is so satisfying to animate a character like this. So I went ahead and closed the Smart Magnet Rig window and look, when I open it again, the Smart Magnet Rig has been updated. So now I see all those nodes that were really involved in moving the character, now they're there. And sure enough, the string of nodes for her arm was going kind of upwards and then the, the string of nodes for her head and neck were going to the left. So let's just rearrange those to look more like our character. All of these tools and buttons are so well documented on the Flash Power Tools website. I kind of feel goofy even doing this, but the reason why I wanted to do my own take and my own demonstration of how this tool works is because it's so fast, it's so satisfying. And again, you can really just move from fussing and fighting with getting your character drawn and, oh, was this angle right? And, oh, did I draw the hand correctly? And you can just bring your character to life, make them sing, dance, talk, walk, move. So very satisfying. A lot of my excitement for this tool is because I had been fighting and wrestling with bringing a set of flash rigs to life for a couple of years. I really set out to bring this one character to life. And after just the amount of time that it took and the results that I was getting were so you know, unspectacular, and then along comes this tool and something that I had been trying to do for many months, I was able to do in a couple of days. I mean, I could say a couple of hours. And now with the freestyle rigging method, I'll be able to go even faster from having my drawn artwork, which takes some time to having a character that I can make perform in animated performances. Awesome. I hope you're excited too. If you like this video, if you found something helpful or fascinating, please help me get the word out. Uh, this is an amazing tool. It catches Animate CC right up with the rest of them. I think it puts it right at the front of the pack. When you compare other rigging processes, the speed and the intuitive results of rigging and animating this way, it, it really changes. It changes everything. That's all for this video. I'll see you next time.